Hey guys, welcome back. It's Claytano. Thank you so much for tuning in as always. And today we're going to be getting back into the How to Rune series. I have not posted a video in a extremely long time for the How to Rune series. And the reason why I'm getting back into it now is because my cousin sent me a random message out of nowhere and said, Hey, my wife just saw your How to Rune Sigmaris video and they didn't even know that I was like a YouTuber. They didn't know that I played Summoner's War. They just happened to come across it. And it kind of made me like remember how much that these videos actually help newer players in the game. And I feel like I only I only got so far. Like I started with all the, the fire nat fives and I moved through all of them. I did a video for each one of them. And then I started moving through all the water nat fives and I ended off on Praha. And there was a time, if you guys are just new to my channel, since I posted my last Had a Rune video, I was literally doing nothing else besides Rune videos. And I don't want to do that now. I just want to kind of post a Had a Rune video in between here and there. But I am still going to go down the list. So next one will be Chow. Next one will be the the Water Monkey, uh, one of the few Water Nat Fives that I don't have, as you can see. I don't have a Teor and some other things but we won't talk about that because i get salty about it <laughs> just kidding but for um for the video i basically go over how to ruin her where she's best used and what are her general compositions or the monsters that you want to use with her and for the runes i go over like early game compared to like mid to late game type styles so first off we have annabelle right she as you can see here, if I can click on this thing again, um, she awakens into resistance, which is pretty nice because one of the areas that you want to use Annabelle is in R5, which is raids. And if you have at least a decent amount of resistance, which is like anywhere between like, I would say 59% up, then you're pretty much got 100% because a lot of people like to use 100% or they like to use the 41% um, resistance leader skills and stuff like that. Look at this. Okay, let's make sure that she's awakened. Um, so then aside from that, you have her leader skill, which is the crit rate of all allies by 38% for water monsters. Typically not a really useful leader skill for Annabelle from where she's used. And I would say the only time you would really throw that on her is like, say you're fighting an RTA, which is another great place for Annabelle. And she were to, uh, they, you didn't have any other leader skills with you and they just left Annabelle and that's it. I would say that's probably just, hey, throw it on her because that's the only other one we got. Most of the time you don't use the crit leader skill unless you're maybe like farming as well, like farming, five on hell, eight in hell. She's good at that too, for sure. The third skill here attacks all enemies three times. Each attack has a 40% chance to decrease the target's defense for three turns. This attack will deal more damage according to your max HP. So it's a bruiser defense breaking skill. So the more HP you have, the more damage you're going to do. And it's nice in raids because it's a three turn defense break. So you get a little bit more assistance from it. And it, that third defense break turn actually ends up hurting for like long drawn out fights like RTA, like Guild Wars. Uh, if you bruiser in regular arena, it could definitely help you out as long as they don't have like a cleanser or anything like that that would remove those buffs or remove those debuffs rather. For the second skill though, removes the harmful effects on all allies and recovers their HP. Recovery amount is proportionate to your attack power. So this is where Annabelle gets a little bit wonky, right? So <laughs> her first skill deals damage based on HP. Second skill heals based on attack power. So what do you really want to focus on? Well, it's really what do you use Annabelle for? Like what is your main purpose? So yeah, she can be used in all, the, all these different places, but do you use her more as a farmer? Or do you use her more as like a cleanser in R5? Do you use her as a damage dealer? how do you want to ruin her? So it's really, it, it gives you a lot of options, but overall you want to make sure that your stats are high for pretty much everything. Okay. She doesn't really need to worry about crit rate or crit damage too much. So you want to just focus those extra stats into either HP or attack or speed. That's like the main ones, but she does have really nice base stats 
for a monster that needs to have a lot of those HP and attack stats. Okay, so they, they make it a little bit easy there. The 769 is a little low, but I mean, what can you expect for a support monster anyway? And one of the things with Annabelle, just as far as like super next level strats, if you guys haven't thought about it already, which I'm sure most of you have, but you want to have a little extra speed on your Annabelle than most of your teammates. So when you go into a dungeon, when you go into a battle, whether it's arena or any sort of PVP, you want to make sure that your Annabelle is definitely going faster than most of your other monsters. So speed tuning is so important with Annabelle because say say you have four four teammates and someone lands a stun stuns every single one of you but your anavel which happens a lot because she awakens into resistance she resists those stuns quite often actually so she resists the stun and she's there everybody else is going to go after her she uses her cleanse skill completely clean cleans them of all of their um all their filth and then they get to take their turns right away and it's like nothing ever happened however if you have annabelle come after your other monsters then what happens so everybody gets stunned they take a turn they don't get to do anything because they're stunned their attack bar goes back down to zero and then you have annabelle coming in behind everybody and tries to cleanse but at that time you don't even need a cleanse so you're just like okay i'm just gonna go basic attack and try to sleep you with my teddy bear so if someone's a teddy bear to attack the enemy this attack has a 25 percent chance to forcibly put the enemy to sleep for one turn and then it's acquiring another turn if it puts the enemy to sleep which is pretty cool it's like a built-in violent proc which speaking of rta with annabelle being good in rta and the violent procs being nerfed from you know, continuous, the maximum just being one violent proc, this will reset that violent proc percentage. So you can essentially still violent proc with Annabelle for a very long time and not have to worry about being held to that one violent proc. I think that's kind of nice for the built-in violent. That's why Sierra is so good in RTA because she can just reset that violent proc all the time. Um, but yeah, so you want to build her as far as runes are concerned. I'll go over the mid to late game runes first. Uh, I would say that's a little bit more like what your guys' goal should be. Um, eventually, you want to go like attack, attack HP with at least 30% HP from substats. And I would say around like plus 90 to a plus 100 at least. Like anything more is obviously great, but you want to have like plus 100 speed plus 20,000 HP, and then like plus 800 to 1,000 attack, and that's a solid Annabelle at that point. And it doesn't really matter how you get those stats because you can have attack on your 2, 4, and 6 slot. You can have your HP on 2, 4, and 6 slot. So as long as you have those like stats, just try to figure out the runes that fit to make your Annabelle look like that. And the best way to do it, I would say, is just using the rune optimizer plugging Annabelle in and s saying, I want these stats, can I do it? Boom, and then it tells you, yep, you can do it, or nope, you gotta go farm, bitch. So <laughs> I love I love the Rune Optimizer, I'm a big fan, I use it all the time, I think it's great. If you guys don't know how to do it, there's some great information to, to download it, and it's super helpful. So as far as the actual set, though, is concerned, I would say it's definitely gotta be violent you know there's some other weird builds but i would say just just focus on violent and since she is such a good monster in rta definitely got to have will especially for guild wars as well not too much not too important for r5s if that's all you're doing with your annabelle of course will after one turn it's not doing you any favors so i would say anything outside of r5 you probably want will on her now, if you're just starting out, you don't have the ability to farm dragons yet. Well, lucky you, because Annabelle is a great monster to farm dragons with, or at least help your DB10 team, because she has a cleanse and removes the dots that do more damage on you if the dragon has them on you. Um, but if you're newer to the game, you can say, barely beat the GB10. You can start killing some GB10. I would say build her with a couple of different types of builds. I would say... 
Um, you can go a Fatal Energy build. You can go a Swift Energy build. You can do even an, a, a f I, I, I mean, there's a ton of, there's really a ton of different builds that you can do, but even just starting out, it, as long as you're looking for those stats, I would say prioritize the speed first. Make sure that she's tuned where she goes before your other monsters in most situations. Once you have that down, then focus on HP. Okay, focus on HP. If you can only get it to like 10 to 15,000, that's fine. And then after that, focus on attack and then kind of work in that order. So as long as you got her speed tuned, then start looking at other stats and then kind of keep rolling around until you just max her out and have like 50,000 attack, 1 million HP, and I don't know, 300 speed. <laughs> but uh, yeah, as far as comps, um, she's good for maybe some like cleave AOs. If you have not heard of cleave AOs, they're AOs with like, say, Galleon, two other nukers and such. So if you don't have like a Tiana and you're scared about your team getting stunned off the first turn, if they're going to outspeed you, you boom, take the hit. Everybody gets stunned. Like say there's a Praha that's stripping you. Boom, take the hit. Anvil revives everybody up. Then you have Galleon go, then you have your Xeros go, then you have your Tosi go right after, or something like that, you know, two nukers. Um, other RTA comps, she's good with pretty much all the main the main stars, Ganymede, Molong, they're pretty much good with anybody, so uh, don't really know, need to go too much in detail with that. As far as Guild Wars, just pair her with somebody a little bit more bruisery. I would say she's nice with like the Beast Monks and stuff and Orion's always cool too with, with Annabelle. But yeah, aside from that, I mean, not really much else to say. It's pretty much straightforward. Just focus on stats. Don't really care too much about the set unless you're making sure that you have Violent on her. But aside from that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, if you wanna see more How to Rune videos, go ahead and hit that like button. Also subscribe for more videos every single day. Don't forget to hit the bell to get notified of those videos and as always stay soupy don't be potatoes and i'll see you next time bye bye what's going on soup it's claytano be sure to subscribe for more content every single day if you missed yesterday's video you can check it out here and if you're in need of some free crystals you can click on this other link instead also if you want to stay connected with me personally go ahead and hit me up on any social media platform at claytano and i will see you guys tomorrow